Okay. Um, yeah, thank you very much for, for coming. Um, last week, um, we, looked, we started looking into, the, into um, how to work with files and directories. And there are a few things that I'd like to, um, that I should have said last week. And that is that I thank very much the Software Carpentry people, uh, software-carpentry.org, and I think they are now, now the Carpentries, I don't know exactly the website, um, for last week and for, two, for, the, for today. Um, I'm following their um, lecture on the, on the bash quite closely. It always makes it easier to, if people have prepared this stuff. Um, tomorrow we'll, we will diverge a little bit from what they're doing um, uh, tomorrow, next week. But until then, um, yes, thank, thanks a lot and have a look at their website. Also, so we've, we've, come on. we've seen, can I hide this? No. No, I can't hide this. Okay. So we've seen um, last week about uh, how to navigate through the file system. Um, and we learned how to find out in which, what, what is the current working directory. And we've seen the, the LS command for list, for, for list um, directories. Uh, we've seen the command mkdir to make new directories. So, and rmdir to remove directories. Uh, we've also seen um, the, uh, how that to create a file, we need to put something in it, usually. Um, and yeah, welcome. Oh, we've just started. Uh, if you want to see the content, if we want to see the content, the contents of the file, um, one method is cat. Cat is the is the simplest um, thing. It just takes a file and dumps its contents on the screen. So, it's, I'm not there yet. So, this is really easy. Um, it just prints the contents of the files, but it quickly gets very complicated. So, for example, if I go into this directory um, which, um, is, which contains a typical output file of, uh, of, a UM of an Atmosphere UM job, and you can see if I dump this on the screen, then I don't see I don't see a lot. It just flips over so quickly that nothing happens. Now, most terminals have a buffer, so I can scroll up somewhat, but I don't get to all. But this is as far back as I can get, and this is um, how far I go. So the program, the tip program that you usually use to, if you just want to read a, a text file, is the program less. Um, of course, I need a file name. Yeah, I should probably do this now. Um, if there is this, um, this file name is quite long, and if I if I mistype it. Um, then of course uh, it won't find it. So if I put just a single, so you you want to make sure that you re that you've really caught that you have to you have to act uh, to, to correctly type the whole name. Um, so the trick what so Bash has a feature that you will become that will become so useful to you that you'll do it without thinking about it, and that is the tab. If I press tab, it 
as bash automatically assumes that I want to insert some sort of file or directory name in here. And because there's only one file there, it prints the name, it, it immediately resolves to the full name. So you might have seen me doing this yes, uh, last week several times because it's just so ingrained that if I want to just put the whole thing in, I just press tab and that's it. So um, just look at this. Uh, less basically is a small program that just the text, um, that just prints the text on the screen. Um, you can go up and down with the with the arrow keys by a single by a single um, line, or uh, with space you can go a full page down. With minus you no oh, no okay with page but you can also do that with page down with MacBook it's function and down and the down arrow. So that's uh, that goes um, faster. Um, if you go home and end or on the on the Mac, Macintosh function and left or right, you go to the very beginning of the document or to the very end. And if you want to search for a certain string inside the document, you use the slash command. So you just type slash and then what you're looking for. So for example, the Fortran runtime library. And that, that brings me to uh, that, that highlight immediately brings me to the line, first line um, that contains this word. And that's something that I do quite often because that here shows, okay, here I have, I had a crash. Um, if you just want to go to the next one where it happens, just press N and it will keep searching to the next location where this line appeared, where this word appeared. And shift N back, go, it goes backwards. Um, let's quickly go back to the tab. So just CD was no, last week we discussed it, CD was nothing, just go, brings me back to my home directory. So if I want to go use the tab to go into the desktop data shell directory, if I just press CD and tab, it doesn't do anything because there are just so many files, it doesn't, do what to, it doesn't know what to do. If I press then tab a second time, it will give me a list of possible things that I could, of all the files that I could do. And that's, that can be quite a bit. Actually, in some versions of Bash, it actually tells you, look, there are over 200 possible things. Are you really sure you want me to list them all? So what I can then do, I can start. I can press just the capital D because I know I want to get into the desktop directory. Press tab again. Again, it doesn't work. Press it again, but now it only shows me the things that start with D. Uh, we have desktop documents and download, so E and now tap, and I get into there. And it can even continue with that. If I press tap again and again, so again two, twice, it shows me, okay, these are all the files in here. So I can see now, okay, now I want to get in data shell, so I press lowercase d and data shell. Um, I just, I, I've just created a few files um, here, test, test one and test two. Test two. Um, if I press tab now, just from the T, it noticed, okay, uh, TE. So let's start again. So I just press T and tab. It doesn't do anything, I press it again. It says, okay, there are these possible things that you might want to enter here. So I now press E and immediately completes test because it already knows all the, all the remaining things are, are identical. And, that, and now I have to, it, it gives me this again. Let's clean this up again. Um, so that's, that's, that's about the tab operator. The other thing is that wild cards. So um, there are two wild cards in Bash that uh, are very common. Well, one is one is very practically ubiquitous, and that is the um, star asterisk or star symbol. 
So if I press ls, um, I get all the files there. If I could do something like ls notes.txt and, um, and then it will only, only list the files that have the name, files and directories that are called notes.txt, which of course is only one file because it's only one file. Um, but let's say I want to, um, let's say I want to uh, um, list all the files that start with an N. Um, what I can then do is say ls n and then the asterisk. And a, the asterisk means anything, even nothing, or any, any string that comes after that. So this shows me um, the notes.txt and it actually, and it actually, okay, it doesn't look this way. Uh, and actually uh, also prints the contents because North Pacific Jaya is a, is a directory. So it uh, also prints the contents of that directory. Um, but so this asterisk is actually resolved by the shell, not by the ls command. So it, when we can see that if I type echo n star n asterisk, then this, which would technically just repeat what I, what I said normally. So echo is just an echo. Whatever I put in, it put back out. If I press echo hello, it will just print echo. It just will just print hello. And because I, so if, if I just press echo n star, it means the bash resolves this n star to all to a list of all the files and directories that start with an n pa and passes that to the echo command. And then of course echo pushes them back out. Um, the other, the other uh, wildcard is the question mark. And the, and the question mark actually um, re re um, means any single character. Uh, so, um, let's say we have here, um, uh, so here we have lots of um, files for different uh, chemical elements. And if I just want to have, let's say, all elements that um, have only a single letter abbreviation, then what I can do is use just the question mark. But of course, the so question mark resolves to any single character. And then dot XML because it needs to have XML as well. And then I, and then I press uh, enter. I get, a, I get an echo from someone. It's really <laughs> confusing. Okay, but it's better. Um, so this, this way I can just look at the single ones. And of course I can also do the same uh, with two question marks because that resolve has, so that has to be two question marks, dot XML. And then I get all the ones that have two. Um, yes. Uh, the the white card, the start white card, can be used even at the beginning of or? It can be used anywhere. Anything. So it means, the thing is, um, you know, let's, let's, uh, So if I, so I, I can use, um, for example, I can use a test test star, which means all of them, because, um, because of course, I said it could, can be length zero, or I can use a test dot star, which um, because that way it will no longer take the just test file because it needs to have a dot in there as well. But I can also say something like uh, te 
star um, t, and that um, brings me test and test.txt, but not test.bin, because that doesn't end in a t. Okay. So it is whatever by but the first two letters must be T and the last yes, one. Yes, it says say this this one can I make it should I make it even bigger? I think yeah. it's easier to to read. So this this thing means any file or directory that starts with T E and ends in T and has anything in between. So I can make it even more complicated. I can do something that something like that. So T E something, then the letters B, then the sequence B, I, N, then again something, and then a T at the end. So, of course, that will not find anything because there is no such file. And um, yeah, that's so I think I have just So if you if you if you have copied the data shell files, um, you can think about uh, you can do it. Otherwise, you can think about it. So in the directory data shell slash data, um, list all files that start with a lowercase l. So what is the ls command that you want to use for that? And the second one, I think I've just done. I have a single character abbreviation. I've just did I just did this. Okay. Yes. Uh, can we use star and question mark? Like, you can use the, you can mix and match these as you want. But the, I mean, it's very rare that I use m complex things like that. I would, I might do something like, um, I want to look for all, all variables that have the, all files that have, um, the 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 ter some term inside that so for example mol or m o l or something like that then I would say star mol star um, but I would I I don't you don't usually make it very complicated you usually I either do something at the beginning or at the end so if I want to see all text files I'll do ls star dot txt or if I want to find everything that that has test I will say ls test star. I, I, you don't usually make it more complicated than that. I mean, there are ways to make it more complicated than that. Um, you can even use, to a certain extent, regular expressions, but that is so far out of the scope of this basic be <laughs> bash beginners session. So even the, even the question mark, um, I would argue you probably won't be using that that often at all, but the but the asterisk the star is really really convenient. So are the two the only um, one class we got? Find the star and question. Um, these are the these are the only wild cards that Bash knows. But Bash does have other things, um, so. So, uh, does it work? Okay. Apparently, didn't know that macOS file system doesn't isn't um, case sensitive. Unix file systems are case sensitive, so. Um, it, I wasn't aware that this was the, uh, so you can do something like that. That means either a T or an F at this position. Um, but seriously, don't don't go there. don't go there. I, I just I, I'm telling you because you asked me. Um, things get really really complicated really really fast if you try to do that. Okay. So let's quickly go through the end notes through that. 
So we have the cp command to copy a file or cut several files into a directory. cp. Um, we have the make directory, mkd. Uh, we have mv, move, for either moving a file or list of files to some, somewhere else or to rename a file because it's basic for, for the computer, it's the same thing to rename something or to move something from one. We have um, rm to remove files, rmd to remove a directory, but it only, will only work if it's empty. So what most people do is they just use the rm command even for directories and make them minus lowercase r to say recursive to go. That means if it's a directory, go into the directory, delete everything there. If there's another directory in there, go into that directory, delete everything in there, and then come back out, delete everything. Um, I also have warned you last week to be very careful with the rm command because rm is forever. Uh, the, the asterisk or the star matches zero or more characters in a file name. Um, the question mark matches any single character in a file name. Uh, the shell does not have a trash bin. Once something is deleted, it's really gone. And um, I can bring up this again because it's really, really important. Uh, you can you can make a lot of uh, you can uh, make your life really miserable if you don't follow these four very simple naming conventions. So don't use white spaces. Don't use line breaks. Again, as as I said before, better not use asterisks, question marks, and the um, and the uh, brackets, square brackets. Um, well, you should put that in here. Don't begin file names with a dash. Um, and use dates as year first, then month, then day. And month and day, make sure that they're always two digits long. That way, the lexical order, so ordering and the chronological ordering is the same. OK, are there any more questions about, uh, about files and directories? No, I don't see hear anything here. Um, is anyone waving urgently at me? I'm now looking back at you. <laughs> no, it looks like everyone's fine. Okay. And let's go on to pipes and filters. So um, that is, that's, that's, that, that, now we're coming to the actual strength of the Unix shell. Why are we doing all this cryptic text space stuff? Um, okay. So, so I'm, I'm back in the molecules directory. Um, so, If I want to do something with these files, for example, in this case, let, let's just see how many, I'll just put one on the screen. Um, so we have, uh, these are the, this is how the files look. And let's say we just want to count the number of lines in the file. So how many lines does the file contain? There's a command for that. Of course, there's a command for that. WC, word count. Uh, and it says there are 20 lines, 156 words, and a word is always means one or more letters separated by spaces or new lines, 1,158 characters. Um, I can also do uh, WC minus L, Cubane, and that just says, okay, there are 20 lines. words or characters. 
Now, if you, if you remember from last week, we know we can find this out, what these, what these options mean by pressing man and then the command. So <clears throat> word, line, character, and byte count. So yeah, the, here, here it describes the different options. <sighs> okay. Um, so we can do it all. Um, can do it all for this for all the files in one go. So we just say we we make a, this we run this program over all files. And um, we can just say okay minus l. If you just want the line count. So next question is um, why do we want to make that? For example, let's. Let's say we want to find out which one is the, which file has, has the fewest lines. So which file has the fewest lines? Easy, methane. We can see that immediately. But that's because there are only seven files. If there were 600 files, things would get a lot more complicated very quickly. So we might want the output of this command, we want to save it to work on that again with a different command. And now, of course, we could just copy and paste this. But again, if it's 600 lines, it's a lot of pasting. So what we can do is we can redirect the output. If you remember, read, evaluate, print loop, every program has an, in, has, has an input stream and an output stream. And the shell can simply and you can tell the shell, instead of print it to the screen, dump it in a file. And for that, I use this, uh, I use the greater than sign. So this means the output should be redirected to a file, and then I'm giving, and then I'm giving the, 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 the name of the file. So if I run it now, so, yes. So if I run it now, of course, it doesn't produce any output because all the output has been redirected to the file. But if I look at the files now, now we have this lines.txt. And if we look at the file, again, I'm using cat because I don't have to exit it afterwards. It's a short file. So now all the content that were before printed on the screen are now in this file. So now we might want to do something else. So what, if we want to find out which one is the shortest, well, what we want to do is some sort of sorting of this, of this list. And there is a command called sort. So we can say sort lines.txt. And it has already correctly identified. Um, it has already sorted them correctly. Um, I was hoping a little bit that it wouldn't do that. Because um, sort of, of course, also has different values, has different options to sort. Um, in this case, because WC already indented the numbers to, to go this way, um, the, the lexical sorting, which is the default for sort, is the same as the numerical sorting. So that's why these are actually now in line, but um, um, So now what I've done is I've moved them around a little bit. So I've, I've just removed, you don't have to, you don't have to, to look at this. This was, was just something that I've, that I go out of my way. But basically what I've done is I've removed all the leading spaces from, from this. And now of course, we're no longer 
if I if I were to run on this file now, then the the sorting doesn't work at all because now the one one zero seven is like is is in lexical ordering comes before the twelve from for ethane. And if we if we now look at sort, and we can see that there are other ways to sort. So for example, um, So dictionary order, G, general numeric sort. Sort general numeric will, um, sort of, so that if you, want, if you want to have floating, if you want to assume floating points. Human numeric sort. Um, so if you're, so that will sort um, 2, a, 2M as larger than, 2K, and then, than 5K. So if, for example, if you have file sizes and you might say 5K for that file and 7t for that file this will make it this will make it good but it, what we are looking for in this case is n numeric sort so we say sort minus n lines no space then again it identifies these numbers correctly and sorts and sorts them according to where we want So we, but we have now, um, we have now created this, um, the lines.txt. So now we say sort minus n lines.txt and we redirect this again into a sorted lines. So now we have, now we have a new file where all these, where all these values are sorted. Again, if it was 600 files long, we don't want, we only want the first value. We want to have the smallest file. We don't want all these 600 files on this list. We just want the first one. And for that, there's another command, head, head minus n1, sorted lines. And now we have just this, um, just this file. Um, so now we know that um, the shortest file is methane.pdb and has, it has nine lines. And that is what we want. And of course, in the process of getting here, we have created two new um, temporary files that we now need to, um, that we now need to delete again because we don't need them anymore. So for that, um, bash has a different method, a different um, method, and that is a pipe. So the, a, di a different type of pipe. I said before that every program has a standard input stream and a standard output stream. Well, bash can glue these together. If I say the LUC minus L star dot uh, PDB, and then just the vertical line, that means the output from that program should become the input to the next, sort minus n. So now, immediately, we, we get into the, we got the sorted list. And we can even pipe that again into the next command, head minus one, or minus n one. And that way, just with a single line, with a lingual, by, by gluing these, output streams together, we have just created the output file that we want from the files that, from, from the files that we need. So here we have the, <coughs> how, how you have to, to, to think about that. Um, so the, the first one, the wc minus l start of PDP, the output stream of that gets directly dumped into the shell. Um, by redirecting it, instead of putting output in this on the shell, it puts that into the file. Or by these with these with these vert, uh, uh, vertical bars, it just pipes the output of one into the uh, into the input of the other. Most most programs that are usually used with the shell 
that use that work on files will act in such a way that if no file name is provided, it will take its input from, it will work on the standard input. So standard output, standard input, these are the two, these are, are the two ways that you, the names for the, for the, for the streams of, of, of text that either a program produces or a program expects to get. Because I was here last time uh, to exit a uh, command uh, man and ah yes so um, uh, usually Q quit ends oh, the program okay. um, but you can also use uh, control um, you can also use control uh, no. Doesn't work with man. Okay, Q. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So, exercise. There's a new filter. So, by the way, these these um, commands that put that 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 work modify these streams like sort, like head. These are called filters because they take some sort of input stream, turn it into some other form of output stream, somehow different, that's somehow different. Even, even WC is, techni is technically a filter. So you can, um, you can use WC to just count how many words or how many lines of, of output is another program has produced. Um, now let's have a new filter program, unique. In this data shell slash data, there is a file called salmon.txt. What happens if you use the filter program unique on it? So what you do is um, what was that? Uh, so so salmon.txt uh, has these. Um, are these fish type, fish species? I don't know. Unique, what, what let's, from, from name, just think about what it might do, what the filter might do. You, it, it means it's unique names. So let's see what it does. It doesn't quite do what you expect. So it has removed the, dub, the lines that are double that, that are the same as before, but it has not removed all of them. And that is because it's really, it would have to remember all the previous lines in memory to do that. In this case, it just compares this line to the previous one. Now, um, so what, what do we want to do if, if we want to remove all the files if, if we really just want to have these two words? Sort. Sort, exactly, we use sort. And we pipe that output into unique. And now we have only, because by, by sorting it, all the same, all the things get together. Um, and, and this works. So there is, of course, uh, is it? You doing past it already, how we're looking at unique keyword. Uh, okay, of course. There is um, sort itself also has a unique key, so you can you could just press sort minus u, and that would also um, mean return just just identical. But we're talking about pipes here. We're not talking. We're not really uh, so how that how that works. Okay, how what's the time? 
Okay. So let's. Ah, oh, yeah. So there are also a few things. So for example, um, so if, if we have, um, let's go back to this, to this lines of txt. And now, um, so I'm, I'm now using the pipe into output file again. And I use a single um, uh, uh, greater than sign. Okay. It has now produced, it now has now produced output. If I now um, use, want to have a different one. So now I use um, the redirect again. It has produced a new file. It has overwritten the old file. That might not always be what you want. For example, if I wanted to man manually go through these files and accumulate this thing, then what you do is um, you use two. You use two of these uh, greater than signs, and what it then does it appends it. Um, now you have first Qbane from the first one, and then um, from the second one. Um, now, a different thing is uh, you can also um, pipe stuff in. So, um, as I said, Bash understands both, both an input stream and an output stream. And if you want to, um, and if you want to use, uh, if you want, let, if you want to use some the input stream um, as uh, from coming from a file. So I could use just WC. If I just press WC, it would expect from standard input. So, and then I press Control D to say, okay, this is the end of the input stream. And now it, it, it has counted hello world. So it says, okay, it's two words, two lines, 12 characters in total. That's because it, every, uh, we have a, a character return at the, at the end of here every time. Um, so instead of um, manually writing this all, I can also say, I can also pipe something in. So um, I could do something, uh, minus L, and then I use the smaller than arrow, so, or the, the smaller than sign, which kind of is the um, left pointing arrow. And then I can just give it a file name, and that means that the contents of the file gets get dumped into the WC, into the standard input stream of the of the um, of the VC, of the of the WC command. And you can see that it doesn't have a file name anymore. That is because WC doesn't know the file name where it come where it's coming from anymore. It gets it as a standard input stream. It doesn't know where it's coming from. Only Bash knows that. What is that useful for? It doesn't seem very useful at first. There are um, there are some programs that uh, that need something like that. Uh, you can also use that to um, uh, if, if you have um, there are programs, for example, to compare two files, and that way you can pipe two different outputs into the same uh, into the same program. It doesn't sound it doesn't sound all that much, but there are other quite useful features that are related to that. So minus L, I can use, for example, two left arrows. Let's call them left arrows because that's why they're shows them. And then I say something like um, EOF. I give, a, I give a key. Now what it now 
expects me, it now gives me a different prompt. You can see that. Now I say, say hello world, and then I press, say AOF and a file, and then, it count, and, and then it counts that. So this is useful in shell scripting that we will come to later. If you need, um, if you need to, to uh, run a specific um, thing, for example, if you have a shell script, that, but then you need to write a, have a little bit of Python code. And there's also a third one, and that is, I would just want you to, and I probably need not use L here. Uh, that is just, I'm giving you the string that you should pipe into the standard input. That was that, and then it counts the number of characters in that, in that um, string that I've given it. Uh, yes, and I think that's more or less where I want to leave it for now. Um, this, is, this has been um, pipes and filters, so we can pipe the output of one, of, of one program either into a file or into, a into the standard input of a different uh, program. Uh, we call these programs that modify, the, that modify these, these input output streams filters. Ultimately, they're just, just a program that does something. And there are ways to use, um, to, to pipe something in. And next week, we'll get into variables and loops, but that is a completely new topic and I certainly will not even start that in the final five minutes that we have. So are there any questions about filters and pipes? I cannot hear anyone. So either you're not talking or you haven't, or you don't have your, micro, your microphone muted or both. Thanks, Olga. Okay. Yes, so. Uh, what does the double less sign do? Um, so that you give it a keyword and then it pipes everything until you type that keyword. Um, oh, okay, okay, that's the keyword is to end, and the oh, okay. Okay, so, okay, then, um, we have been, it, it, the session has been recorded. Um, we'll be uploading this, this video in, onto our YouTube channel as well. Um, other than, see you next week, hopefully. And I hope you had fun and you learned something.